Hi there, welcome to another video of mine. This time I will um, make another video, a new video about the Lomo LCA. As I told you before, I'm going to reformulate a bit the way that I present the cameras with some changes. And um, I picked the Lomo because uh, you know by now, if you have seen my other videos, that I really don't have, uh, let's say, a lot of consideration for Lomography. And uh, so I chose today this camera because I owe a sort of, uh, not a, an apology, but uh, I have some guilt feelings concerning the Lomo, but that I will talk later on. So the Lomo LCA is a camera from the ex-Soviet Union. It is a very compact camera, very small, and it was um, a camera that was copied from this one. This is the uh, Hosina CX2, and it's almost a perfect copy. But there are some differences. Um, the Lomo um, is a camera that uh, opens the lens like this and the Cosina in a more curious way. Uh, also the Cosina focus here and the Lomo focus here. Well, but today it's not about the Cosina, it's about the Lomo. So now that you have seen the camera where the Lomo was copied. They copied everything from, you know, the Cosina is a bit uh, more, I don't know, uh, heavy, heavy perhaps, but it, it's not as that solidly built as you might have thought. So the Lomo is reputedly known for being very fragile, uh, electronics wise, and also the plastics and everything is not really very nice. Um, so the Russians went after the Cosina CX2. I really don't know why. I know that Practica marketed a version of the Cosina CX2, but the, the Russians didn't bother with that, so they copied instead of buying it <laughs> and reselling it. Um, it's a null auto camera. It has an auto position here, and then you have. Uh, an aperture scale from 2.8 all the way to f16 but if you remove the selector from this position the camera defaults to the flash speed and so you have access to the apertures but not to the speeds just a single speed around uh, 1 60th of a second I am not sure because I've read 1 30th and I've read 1 60th, so somewhere between that. Uh, besides that, you have your ISO setting here, also the metering cell, and you focus by steps here. And inside the viewfinder, you've got a needle with icons that tells you where you have focused. There is rewind crank. No advanced lever because the camera uses thumb wheel. There is provision for flash and also provision for a motor drive but that I don't know. I, I don't think that it ever existed in the Russian version, but as it existed in the uh, Japanese version. So uh, it's here. I don't know if the motors are interchangeable or not. So, um, the Lomo is an all plastic camera, just like the Cosina. And it was this camera that started the craze for Lomography. Basically, the culprit is this lens, the Minita 1 32mm 2.8 for element lens, that uh, when you go to the Lomography site, you see the most horrendous things. Uh, the most, you know, if you want to see uh, a bad lens, then you go there. 
uh, you see artifacts, you see flair, you see, I don't know, you see so many things that I, I, I really, um, I always was intrigued why would anyone pay a lot of money, especially uh, post-Soviet Union, uh, Lombos, and those that are made in China that even feature 21 millimeter lens. Well, that's interesting, but anyway, they're terribly expensive. And I always thought for that, for, to get those results, and, well, I always thought it was nonsense. Now, the camera uses four, sorry, three batteries that go here. They are AG12 batteries, I think, not AG3. The 13, um, but I think no, no. This 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 one is a A G um, 13 or L R 44. The Kiev 35. It's different. I was making a confusion here. Um, so they are easy to find. It takes uh, three batteries, so four volts and a half. No battery, no camera. Simple as that. The camera is not really quiet. As you can see, but it is very discreet in turn in looks, and its uh, shutter is capable from several seconds. Some people say even minutes, as the slowest shutter speed um, and top speed. I really don't know what to say to you because I've read so many things, but I think it is in the region of one. 205th of a second, not 500. Um, now, what, why am I redoing the video? Because one of these days, I was looking at this camera and I thought, well, I never used this camera because, uh, well, I bought this very cheaply at a flea market, so I didn't pay 100 euros or 50, or 30, or 20, or whatever, so uh, my conscience was okay. But um, I thought I would like to, perhaps it would be time to uh, give it a go and try this little camera, not the way that lomographers do, but the way that I, I always do. This is uh, to treat the camera seriously, and I decided to load um, black and white film, Mako 400 as a and off I went to the street with this I did the photos that I usually do in my own style absolutely convinced that nothing would be right that either the shutter would not fire or the, 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 the pictures would be completely overexposed or underexposed or full of flare you know with Martians and uh, little elves and all the mysterious things that you see on uh, lomographies. But anyway, I gave it a go and uh, I took it with me to the street, like I told you, and I spent an afternoon taking some pictures with it. Then I developed a film and I was amazed to first discover that the camera exposes real well. Okay, I really didn't uh, put the camera into a uh, troublesome situation in terms of lighting. But uh, anyway, the film was evenly exposed, uh, so that was a plus. And when I saw the pictures, uh, I was very disappointed because, you know, they were very normal. <laughs> um, some of them, you can see some vignetting. Uh, you can see a little distortion, but anyway, this is a 32mm lens. This is not a lens that is going to win any price for being super sharp, but it is very acceptable. But I fail to see any flare, reflections, strange things, abnormal beings, whatever. Uh, the pictures looked, you know, pretty normal, like they were taken with a normal camera, because now I'm in a position to tell you that this is a pretty normal camera. Of course, I used black and white film, so I don't know in color, 
how the camera behaves. Of course, I did not point it to directly to the sun. I never do. So I use it exactly as I use any of my cameras, digital or film. Um, did not I did not do anything that I wouldn't do with uh, another camera. Uh, the only pain was, you know, that I had to pre-focus, to pre-focus, and uh, so I wasn't really sure about the depth of field uh, of uh, the Lomo lens, that I was a bit worried, but the pictures came acceptably uh, uh, sharp and focused. So, um, I'm here to tell you that as a camera, as a street camera, for street photography, it really works. Uh, it's a um, bit noisy, it's true, but at the end of the day, if you want to use it as such, if you can find one real cheap, it's no Olympus XA, either in terms of silence or in terms of lens quality, but um, it's a pretty cool camera and against all odds, I really enjoyed spending the afternoon with it. So. To end this video, next, um, letting you see some pictures, the best ones of course, not the, the worst ones, <laughs> that I took with the Lomo and that uh, I was particularly uh, pleased with it. And uh, pictures that show um, they are not aesthetically um, fantastic, but that's my fault, that's not the Lomo's fault. But technically, they are not what many people think that this camera is about, including me, or me included if you want, because I really thought this would be a toy camera that um, would give me toy results. Well, enjoy the pictures, and I hope to see you very soon in another video of mine.